In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the process of adding a page and building a page within your It's Learning course. We want to begin our process by starting in the planner of your course. And the reason that we want to start in the planner is because the planner will automatically associate any resource that I add to standards that have already been connected with a particular lesson of study which is connected to a unit of study. So everything filters down. The other nice piece, and I'll show you this at the very end of the tutorial, is that when we populate a date here, it's going to take all of the resources that I have developed for my students and place them on their overview page. So we're going to begin the building process by starting in our student resources column. And remember, student resources are ways in which we can present or provide content to students. So we're going to add a resource and we're going to create something from scratch. So we're going to say create new. And when we say create new, it brings up all of the different types of resources that we can add to our course. For our tutorial here, we're going to be adding a page. When I select page, notice that it defaults to um, a separate window and a new page here, and the title actually is new page. If I hover over the title, it will allow for me to just um, left click and I can edit the title. So I'm going to title my page, and my page is all I'm going to be is going to be all about the phases of the moon. When I'm happy with my title, I can either just click off or I can click my little check mark and now my title has been um, saved. So I don't particularly like working within, do you see how this window is separate from all of my other windows? What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to um, exit out of this window and notice that when now within my student resources column, I actually have my page that I just created. So I'm going to access my page again. And now I have my Phases of the Moon page, and it's all within um, my course um, that I was working in. So the first thing that I'm actually going to do is add a content block. And the first thing that I want to provide for my students um, are the objectives of the lesson. So in order to provide our objectives, we're going to add a rich content block. And the rich content block, as you can see by the description, allows for us to add um, text, images, and links. So because our objectives are going to be text-based, um, we're going to select rich content. I'm going to give my block a title, which is going to be objectives. And what we're going to do in this block is really just focus on this upper level um, of the rich text editor. And we're going to start typing our objectives. And I am going to actually increase my indent. So that's increase and decrease your indent. Now I might add more text there, but for our purposes as just a sample, um, I'm going to stop there because I want to bring your attention to um, font. The default font for its learning is something that we call Open Sans. And if you notice in our font dropdown, Open Sans is not one of your font choices. Which means that if I change my font here at any point in time, I never have the ability to get back to the default font. So something that the instructional technology team would suggest as just um, something to be aware of is that we typically never change the font within its learning because we can't ever get back to that default font. Something else to consider is the difference between providing content in an electronic format or a digital format such as its learning versus a text-based format such as a textbook. So our textbooks and our newspapers are all printed in Times New Roman or a font that's similar to that because if you notice off of the T or off of the N there are feet and those are the serifs um, versus something like Tahoma is a sans serif font and uh, there are no feet 
our eyes track text better in an electronic or a digital format that does not have serifs. So an open sans font, which is what the default font is, would um, be easier for our students to track our text. Something else that we like to do is to um, just bold some of our action words. Um, you can change the color of your font. You can change the background. Just remember to be mindful of how that's going to visually appear either on the student's device or also maybe up on your IWB if you're displaying for the students to see. You have symbols here, so if you want to insert a special character, um, if you click there, you can see all of the different um, special characters that you can insert from that top level. You also have your alignment here, um, and then I used my indent features here. You have um, numbers and bullets as well. So I'm happy with my text here, and I'm going to say OK. And there is my objective for our lesson. So now I'm going to add another content block. And in this content block, I'm going to um, get my students um, started with a poll just to kind of get them motivated for what we, we might be talking about. And maybe I'll say um, something along the lines of, And notice that if I had a choice that um, necessitated more than two answer options for my students, I can add an alternative or I could delete my alternatives by selecting the X. Under my options here for show results, I can show my results for editors only, which means I as the teacher would decide when um, somebody would be able to see the results. Maybe I just want to display the whole class response up on my IWB, so I want to be the only one that has that option. Any user at any time means that the students are going to see your poll results as soon as they land on the page, um, whether one person is answered or 10 people have answered. They're going to see the results right away, even before they have had a chance to answer. Or after the user votes means I would need to make a choice before I would see my results um, being displayed. Um, be mindful that if you select after the user votes, that if I'm the first person to log in and access my page for the day and I answer the poll, it's only going to show the results from the instance that I voted. And if somebody else in my class was the 10th person to vote and submit their response, then they're going to see their vote along with the nine previous um, votes that came before them. Um, so there might be an instructional decision um, that needs to be made as far as your purpose for providing that poll for your students. Um, you can select display number of votes and then also can the user change their vote. So maybe you're doing a before and after reading poll and maybe um, the before one is kind of you know to get their thoughts and then afterwards um, they might be able to change their thought process based on the information that they have just read. So you can make those decisions there and then you can say okay. Now notice what happens here. It actually takes my poll because that was the last content block that I added and places it above my objectives. I want my objectives to be at the top of my lesson and so notice as I hover over the top of my content block, I get the crosshairs that will allow me to drag and move my content block. So I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag my content block up and now my objectives have been placed on top of my poll. The next thing that I want to do is to think about, um, I want to 
to have my students complete as they're working through these phases of the moon, I want them to have a graphic organizer that they're going to complete digitally, um, or maybe they're going to complete it um, together um, in a collaborative environment with some other um, people within the class. So what I want to do is I'm gonna actually going to add a file uh, for my students to access. So I'm going to add a content block and I'm going to add a file. And their file is the phases of, um, of the moon worksheet. And either as we're going through the lesson or we're going through this particular experience, which might span several days, they're going to be completing this worksheet. And I have this worksheet that I have right here. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to open. Now notice that once I have my um, file selected, I actually have to upload it to the system. And this takes it out of it living um, locally in my computer or whether it's stored in my OneDrive. Um, I'm actually going to take it out of that location and it's going to now be living as part of my It's Learning page, which is nice because sometimes we are concerned about, you know, needing to share a file or where is that file being saved or are my students going to have access to it. This way it makes it um, nice and secure and I know that when my students access my course, they're going to um, or access my page that they are going to be able to access this phases of the moon worksheet. And notice that I am providing a new file name so I can change the file name. So maybe if I wanted to give my students directions here, um, I, could, I could change the file name there. And I'm going to say OK. And here is my phases of the moon worksheet. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab it and drag it down. Now when my students um, actually uh, left click on that, it downloads it and then they have the ability to open it. It's a Word document so they can edit it and then they would be able to digitally complete the worksheet, um, save it and either um, save it to their OneDrive and print it out or maybe they're going to save it and I'm going to have um, an It's Learning assignment that they're going to upload it to submit it to me. Um, but I have several options instructionally that I can make the decision as to what I want my students to do with that worksheet. Now something to consider would be if we're thinking about elementary and if I'm particularly thinking about elementary primary students um, just thinking about technology skills and what we would expect of our students. Um, as a primary teacher, I might not feel like it's necessary to ever upload a file in that manner. Um, so just be thinking about the skills that your students have or what skills you might need to support them with um, the first or the first couple times that you embed a file or you upload a file to its learning for them to then access and complete. So just um, something in your planning and preparation that you might want to consider if you're using a file within its learning. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add an image for our students to look at. So I'm going to say add a content block and this time I'm going to add an image and I'm going to give my block a title. And um, where do we typically find images? Um, we might have images that have come from um, our curriculum that we want to add in. So maybe that's um, saved or it's accessed through SharePoint or maybe it's already been preloaded into its learning um, that we can save onto our computer um, as something that then we can add to our page. Um, for our purposes here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, Google and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just find an image. So I've isolated this image um, that I'm happy with. So I just went to, to Google and I typed in phases of the moon and I selected images. And I like this image um, because it it's very clear and it gives the titles of um, the different types of, of moons. Um, and what I want to do is I want to say I want to view this image. So it's going to isolate just the image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my image and I'm just going to throw it on my desktop. And so it's downloaded 
And now I'm going to come back over to my It's Learning page and I'm going to choose my file which means that now I'm going to need to um, find it. Remember it was on my desktop so I'm going to select my image. I'm going to say open and remember we have to do the upload. So this is very similar to the file in that we select it and then we say upload. So now it's uploading it from my computer and it's now um, as part of my page in its learning. And I can do the same thing. So I might ask my students a prompt like, um, which phase of the moon, or I might rephrase that in, So I'm asking them a question um, that they'll look at the graphic and be able to answer the question, hopefully based on the graphic that I've given them. So when I say OK, notice that the, it then becomes um, kind of like the caption for my, my image. And I'm going to, again, slide this down. And I need to put it underneath my worksheet because that's the flow that I want. Notice that if I hover over my image, it says um, view bigger. And when I click it, it um, makes my image a little bit larger. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to walk through the process of adding an image um, through the rich text editor. Um, so you'll see the difference in um, the way the images are loaded and the way that the images are then viewed. So I'm going to add a content block and this time I'm going to add a rich content block because we're going to add an image to our rich content. And I'm going to give my block a title. And this time we're going to be focusing down here in the second line of options within the rich text editor. So what I'm going to do is I want to add that phases of the moon image into my rich text. Um, and to do that, I'm going to select my image option. And notice as I hover over each one of my buttons here on my rich text editor, it does give me a preview of what selecting that button will then do. So I'm going to hit image and I'm going to upload an insert and same thing. I'm going to need to navigate to my image. So here's my image again and I'm going to say open. Now this is tricky because if I say OK right now, I've selected my image and if I say OK, Here's my content block and my image has not been added. And the reason that it has not been added is because there's a hidden scroll bar. So I'm going to upload an insert again and I'm going to navigate back to that image. Okay, there's actually a hidden um, option down here and if I scroll down over on this side, notice now I have this green upload and insert. So just be aware that if for some reason you say OK and you're like, where's my image? You can always go back to upload and insert and it will then add your file or add your image into your rich content block. Now I'm going to say OK. And now you can see the difference um, in adding your block that way or adding your image that way. So I'm going to move this down. Now the next thing that I want to do is I actually want my students to read an article um, that is associated with the phases of the moon. Um, and so what I want to do is I actually want to um, go back and edit this content block. So I'm going to edit. And um, I'm going to say, read, oops, read the article about the phases. So I'm going to navigate and find a um, article about the phases of the moon. So I'm just going back to... Um, So here is a Newzella article about the phases of the moon. So I'm going to select that. And what I want
after I found the Newzella article, I realized that I wasn't happy with it. So actually what I found is um, a National Geographic Kids article uh, about Mission to the Moon, and it talks about the, um, the phases of the moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this link right here because I want to send my students to this article, and I'm going to highlight the URL, and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to come back to my It's Learning page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my text here. So I'll read the article about the phases of the moon. And after I highlight my text, I'm going to come back up and I'm going to use my link button here. And I'm going to paste in that URL. I'm going to say OK. And now when I click off of that, that text is now a hyperlink that will send my students when they click on it to the um, article that I wanted them to read. Now something else to consider um, when we're looking at this is sometimes you know that might be a lot of text for my students to read or maybe I have students in my class that might be struggling readers or even if you're thinking about you know I'm an elementary school teacher um, we can make things a little more image driven as well so we could actually link that same article to the image so if I select my image if I hit my link button and paste the URL again and say OK. Now not only is my text um, a link that will send us to the mission to the moon, but also my image will send us to the same article. Now if we want to be super fancy, there's even another way that we can embed or we can add uh, URLs um, and hyperlinks in to our content block. So I'm going to put my cursor down and actually what I'm going to use now is this um, button here, which is the embed button. And I will preface this by saying that not every single website or URL will work this way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that URL and I'm going to paste it in. And notice what happens. It kind of gives me this little preview, which is kind of a nice little um, aesthetically more pleasing um, way to view a hyperlink than maybe just the text. So I'm going to say insert and now it'll show me that I have some embedded content there and I can say OK. And there is that same piece of um, or that same option to hyperlink out in three different ways. Um, so you can make the choice as to what's best for you, your personal preference, or what works what best for your students. Something else to consider within this uh, line of the Rich Text Editor is you also have audio and video recording features here, which would allow you to record just your audio. So you could maybe record the steps of you know, a lab, or maybe you want to record the steps of what your students should be doing, or maybe you want to record directions for your students, um, either for struggling readers or our youngest kids that might not be yet readers um, or even just for those students that just might need the extra support of um, a um, the ability to go back and refer back to directions so you can record audio there you can also record video which would um, record you giving information to your students. Um, something to consider with the new video recording feature here is that most of the newer devices that are um, in our schools now have the integrated webcams which make it which would make it very easy to incorporate video into your content blocks. Something else to consider is that this rich text editor, all of these features are also available to students within the student learning experiences. So when they're submitting an assignment or when they're responding to a discussion board, they can choose those options as well. So your students don't have to be perfect typers or expert typers. They might just be able to, or um, depending on what you allow as far as student choice of being able to respond to an assignment or a discussion post, they could use the audio and video recording features to supply their answers um, in that format. So I'm going to say OK here. And the next thing that we are going to do is we're actually going to now um, bring in a video for our students. So in this content block, we were focusing on linking 
out to resources for our students. Now what we want to focus on in our next content block is actually bringing resources in for our students. So the easiest thing to do is to demo this using um, a YouTube video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a content block and we're still working with our rich content and I'm going to say phases of the moon and this time it's going to be a video. Okay, what I've already done is I've come up here and I opened another tab and I just went to YouTube and I found a video that I was happy with um, from the National Science Teachers Association. And all I did was once the video started playing, I pressed pause and that just pauses my video. Um, it doesn't matter where it pauses, um, but this is the video that I want to now bring into my It's Learning page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and underneath my video, I'm going to select the share option. And when I selected the share option, I get this new menu that appears underneath. And if I took this URL right here, what this is, is this is a link and this would send our students from It's Learning out to YouTube. I want to bring the YouTube video in for my students. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my um, tab here to the embed tab and I'm going to notice that this um, information is already highlighted for me and I might not know what any of that that wording means and that's totally fine. I'm going to show you some advanced options that might make you um, happier about utilizing YouTube uh, with your students because we know that sometimes the content over here or the content at the end of the video might not always be um, appropriate for our students. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select show more and one of the features that we have the ability to do by default um, your YouTube is probably selected our default setting to show suggested videos when the video finishes and that's that menu of probably six or nine videos that shows up at the end and a lot of times they don't really pertain to the video that you were showing. Um, so if we uncheck that, that will um, stop the video right at the end and it won't show any suggested videos. Notice also that you have the ability to change the size of your video um, that you're going to embed. So sometimes you might want the video smaller, sometimes you might want the video larger. It's completely up to you and your preference. So what I'm going to do now that I have those two things set is notice that here is um, that embed code that I'm looking for and if you hover over it it says embed code. I'm going to right click, I'm going to copy. Then I'm going to come back over to my It's Learning page and what I want to do is I'm going to demo and show you two different ways that you can bring in a YouTube video or that you can embed a YouTube video. The first one, we've already talked a little bit about the, the embed button, um, but I can paste that embed code in there and notice it gives me that little preview and that's that same video and I can say insert and there is my video content there. The next way, which is my personal preference, um, and again, it is really just personal preference as to how you do this, I personally like to go to source. And when I go to source, all of that information is what we just embedded here. So you, we can just ignore all of that, and I'm just going to go to the very end, and I'm going to put my cursor right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a right click, and I'm going to do a paste. And I have no idea what any of that stuff means, but it is okay. I'm going to click on my source button again and I'm going to say okay. Now notice both of my videos, um, they look exactly the same. So there's not going to be a difference in um, what it's going to appear for your students. Um, they're not going to know that you use the embed button here and the source button here. But what I will show you is depending on what other content you have in your block or you know your personal preferences again, notice that I am somebody that I like to have my videos centered within my content block. So if I select, this was the one that I used the embed button, if I select center, and then if I come down here, and this is the one that I used the source code for and select center, and then say okay, Notice that my embed button does not allow me to center my video, whereas my source button does. So that's just an extra aside for something um, just to consider as you're building your page and embedding content. 
Um, the embed process would be the same for web tools such as um, Today's Meet or DotStorm or Padlet or Answer Garden. The process is the same as long as you can get to that embed code. Um, now, most of my elementary teachers are probably wondering, my students can't access YouTube. So they're not going to see this video. And you are absolutely correct. And um, sometimes teachers ask, well, what if I put it in ViewPure first? Or what if I put it in SafeShare first? No, that still is not going to work because your video is still pulling from the source of YouTube. And we can tell that by um, the red button, um, which is the YouTube icon. Um, Something to consider from the elementary perspective would be that this would still have to be something that you would do whole class. So maybe a YouTube video is something that you share as a motivation at the beginning of your lesson or as a closure at the end of your lesson. But yes, your students are not going to see this on their page. They'll see the content block, but they won't see the video. So that's something, again, in your planning and preparation to consider as you think about ways in which um, you can incorporate um, embedded YouTube videos into your lessons. So I'm going to show you one other trick. So notice that as I want to move my content blocks down, it's really hard because this is a really uh, a much larger content block than my other ones. I'm working in Chrome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my little option button over here, my little ellipsis, and I'm just going to zoom my page down. And as I zoom my page down, notice that um, my content blocks, I can see more of them so I can actually drag my content blocks up a little bit easier um, than if I had stayed at my full screen um, and stayed at a hundred percent so um, just something to keep in, your, in mind if you struggle in moving your content blocks around so now my YouTube video is at the end of my page so I'm gonna size my screen back up a little bit and I like working right about there. Um, the last thing that I'm going to talk to you about is um, the layout of your page. So notice that next to add content block, you have the ability to change the layout of your page. So when I select layout, by default, all of our pages are set to one column, which is that stream where one content block falls under another. Um, Instructionally, that might be the easiest thing for your students to follow because they know right after one content block, the next one is, is going to be next um, in your instruction or in the lesson progress. Um, something else to, to think about is if we go to a two column layout, it's identical sizing of both columns. So if I drag this one over, you'll see that um, my two columns are exactly the same size. Think about this instructionally though. If I know that I'm starting here, as a student, I might not know whether I need to go from left to right or whether I'm working all the way down the left-hand column and then I'm gonna come back over and go down the right-hand column. So if you choose one of the other layouts, either two column or a wide left, you might wanna consider in your content block titles actually placing a number so that your students know which order the blocks go. Um, something else to consider with the two column wide left. So I'm going to change that. So notice that now it's exactly as it as it sounds. My left hand side is wider than my right hand side. I saw this pay, um, this layout used very effectively with a fifth grade class to where the teacher had taken all of the setup, um, more like housekeeping items, and placed it on the right hand side. She had her objective over there. She had her class groupings because the students were working in collaborative groups. She had that over there and then she also had a file over on the right hand side that the students had to download and then the actual progression of the lesson or the content of the lesson was used on the left hand side so that the students know I'm focused over on the left hand side. One other thing to consider is the usage of the colors as your content block headers. So if I use my little paint palette here, notice I have several options as to the different colors that I can use um, to signify the difference in my content blocks. So maybe I want all of my more student things, oops, 
more of my student things to be um, green and more of my teachery kind of things um, to be red or maybe I want my objective always to be one color and my closure always to be a color so that my students know the content blocks that they're looking at. So you do have some options with with the colors um, just be mindful of um, how that's going to again appear on the student device as well as if you're projecting up to your IWB or onto a screen. Um, all of this um, is also laid out in the technical guide and you can follow along with um, a checklist as well that is embedded and added into um, many of our courses.